Hello and welcome back to my studio. Today I'm going to show you how to draw shiny objects and I'll use this Christmas bow as an example. I'm using Canson Grey pastel paper. It has a little bit of tooth to grab hold of pigment and using toned grey paper makes black and white really stand out. I'm using a medium sketch and peel charcoal pencil, another soft charcoal pencil that was almost as dark for highlights a white charcoal pencil, a blending stump, a kneaded eraser and a sharpener. I've got my sketch lines established and I'm beginning with the general sketch and peel pencil. I tested out all my charcoal pencils from both soft to hard and from light to dark and this one proved to be the one with the darkest dark. Now most people don't really want to work with charcoal because they think it's messy, but it doesn't have to be and I didn't need to smudge anything in my work because I was just really careful where I placed my marks to keep the background untouched and knowing how to work to not make a mess is important, you just have to approach it in the right way. I'm right handed so working from the top left to the bottom right worked for me and obviously you'd work in the opposite direction if you're left-handed. It's not all that easy to erase charcoal and I really wanted to keep my background free of smudges. Using grey, which is a mid-tone paper, means both black and white will show up well on it. And I decided to use charcoal so that I can achieve the best contrast possible. Values are really important in this exercise as I'm looking to achieve a three-dimensional quality as well as show curves and make the object look super smooth and shiny. At this point I'm just really looking at the shapes and they're a series of triangles. Establish your darkest values first. The General's White Charcoal is an invaluable tool and it's really opaque. It's mostly used for highlights but in this exercise I'll use it to cover large areas. Contrast is so important to make things look realistic, but it's one of the things that people ignore. Contrast means having a range of values in your artwork, bright highlights and dark shadows, and this is what makes your drawing pop. Without contrast, your work will look flat and no amount of detail can make up for that, so don't be afraid to get in those dark values. Charcoal is an underrated medium and it's really a fun and freeing way to create and it's great for artists at all levels. And charcoal is also very fast and this bow only took me an hour and a half to complete. Working with charcoal is not only a great exercise in learning about values but a great way to brush up on your shading skills. The sketch and peel pencil is great but it's not as easy to sharpen, so I used a general soft pencil that was sharper and almost as dark to really get into the tight places. Highlights can be achieved with just simple thin and thick lines, and this will make the eye think that there's a curve. By creating either straight lines or jagged edges, you can achieve the curves in the bow. And anywhere where you need to lift pigment you can just use a kneaded eraser. Gradations of the darker value into the lighter value trick the eye. I haven't used a blender yet, but I can still get those gradients by just using the contrast of the black against the white, working one into the other. The words tonal value don't mean a lot to new artists. It just refers to how light or how dark objects are. Objects will appear brighter and lighter when a darker object is placed next to it, and vice versa. It's the best way to achieve contrast, and this is exactly what you want when drawing shiny objects. You can make objects shiny without using silver markers or metallic colored pencils, but just by adding the right contrast. I'm going to concentrate on this part of the curved ribbon. I'm creating a jagged edge to show the illusion of a curved shape. 
All these shapes are really just a series of triangles combined with some semicircles. But the eye doesn't see this. As artists, we have to give out illusions, three-dimensional shapes on a two-dimensional surface. High and starker contrasts are going to stand to attention and act as if they come forward, whereas the less contrast and more grey tend to recede. This helps to make the shape look more like a cone. You can really create subtlety with charcoal, and I'm not blending at this stage. The inside of the cone shape is more subtle with less contrast, and I've also used much lighter pressure. Remember to keep those edges crisp and sharp around the curves. I haven't had to use a blender much as the surface I'm using is fairly smooth, but it does help to make the objects appear shinier by smoothing the pigment out and pressing it into the tooth of the paper. Now there are two sides of this pastel paper and you can use either side. I just happen to prefer the smoother side. The rougher side is harder to blend with as there's more tooth to it. So using this side just made blending a little bit easier. But if you like texture and want to convey that, then the rougher side will work best. I just didn't want any texture on this smooth and shiny bow. Take a look at the reference and notice the light source. The light's coming in from the right hand side, so the bow is much lighter there. Noting this and using more white charcoal there adds to the realism in the drawing. I'm also using more lighter greys and I'm smoothing out my white areas and using less and less of the black charcoal. The blending stumps are great as they have sharp points so they can get into all the corners and edges of the bow. And they're also useful for picking up pigment and moving it around without adding any more. By paying close attention to your reference, you'll automatically add this light in and have a more realistic drawing. But it's always useful to pay attention to where the light is coming from. So the benefits of charcoal, well, it's inexpensive and widely available. It's extremely versatile. It travels well because it's a dry medium and working with it means you don't need to buy many supplies. I just really used a couple of pencils, a blender, and that white pencil for highlighting. Charcoal teaches you how to become a better artist faster, and you learn a lot about shading and tonal values. Blending is easy, it's fun, and it's not as messy as you think. And as you can see from my hands, I didn't need to make a mess. Before I'm finished with my drawing though, I do want to make the bow look like it's sitting on a surface instead of just floating in the air. So I've added a little shadow to it, noting the light source. And after that, I've completed my shiny bow. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the little notification bell to stay alerted to my new content. Thank you so much for watching. Have a safe and Merry Christmas.